Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ed with edhard.me and this is the second video in this series of learning to use SketchUp the practical way by actually making something. So we're making a farmhouse table and I'll flip over here and show you uh, what we're making right here. Uh, it's a little bit big but uh, I've already constructed the base in the first video and now we're going to create the uh, the apron that goes around it and the supports uh, for the table top and to do that uh, we're going to use a combination of two by fours and two by twos and uh, so I'll just continue on by uh, building some uh, or drawing some two by fours that are going to go right uh, in between uh, these uh, grooves right here. So the two going across are going to rest right in the grooves. We're going to nail the cross beams uh, to those and then we're going to wrap the outside with uh, two by twos. So uh, I'm using my rotate tool to uh, move things around and I'm going to use my rectangle tool. I could just as easily use my pencil but instead I'm going to use my rectangle tool to actually draw uh, the uh, uh, two by fours that are going to go all the way around the top uh, support of the table. So let me just click in one corner and another corner and now that I've already spaced this out this is pretty easy so I'll make one face right here then use my push-pull tool to uh, pull that right out to this group and I'm putting my uh, cursor right on the edge so that SketchUp will snap to it. So uh, I've got one of my two by fours, but before I uh, before I change it up, or not, excuse me, before I turn it into a group, um, I want to create a or I want to uh, cut a little groove so that when I attach my table top to the base with little table top Z clamps instead of screwing it on, which is the appropriate way to do it, I want to draw uh, a little groove so I know where to cut. Now, all of your hardware is going to be different, so check out your hardware uh, if you're actually uh, building this to make the table. But um, to show you how to put a little groove in here, I want to cut a one saw blade uh, a quarter inch deep, uh, three eighths inches down from the top. So I'm just going to draw a uh, guide three eighths inches down. I didn't, there we go, on the edge, three eighths inches down. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and I'm drawing another guide uh, one eighth down and zoom out or scroll out and grab my pen tool and just draw a pen line from one intersection to the other. Right there. Now I want to take my push pull tool and go to that little face, click it, and push it in a quarter inch. So now I've, I'll, I've got an ob, or I don't have an object yet, but I'll triple click this and turn it into a group. I keep saying object, I apologize, I mean group. And I'm going to copy it with the command C and a command V and paste it right next door. Now I just want to flip it around so I can grab my rotate tool, find the uh, midpoint here. There we go. So I'll grab my midpoint, zoom out a little bit, and I just want to flip that over 180 degrees. There we go. Next I can grab my move tool, pull it, pick the corner and stick it right there. So next I want to just draw a 2 by 4 to connect the two ends. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So let's uh, work that right around here. Use my hand to sort of position and move things so that I can see them relatively easy. And now I'll grab my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle right there 
use my push pull tool to move that out um, and I'll move that out one and one half inches just like I did before I want to zoom in and grab my uh, tape measure put a guide from the edge down 3 8 inches and then down 1 8 so I'll just type 1 8 once again I'll grab my pencil tool and draw a line there draw a line There, and I can use my push-pull tool once again to go in one quarter inch. Now group those faces. Make a copy of it. And once again, use my rotate tool, find the middle around here somewhere there we go go to the end flip them around 180 degrees and I'll simply use my move tool again to move that right back and match up the corners now around the edges or around the outside I want to place some uh, two by twos and the, again, these are easy to draw now that we've got the main structure in place. So I'll grab my rectangle tool and just draw one face. Use push-pull to push that down one and one-half inches. And I'll turn that into a group. And I can copy and paste that over here to the other side. I can use my move tool to push that down and match up corners. Once again, I'll draw my two by twos using my rectangle tool and my push pull tool. See, it's really pretty easy one and one half inches. Turn that into a group. Copy with Command C paste with command V and once again use my move tool by going matching up corner to corner so now I want to create some supports along the edge of the table and they're going to be made out of these uh, two by twos and I'm going to space them each about six and a quarter uh, inches all the way along so there'll be uh, eight of them in the middle of the table and so I'll just create some guides that, uh, that do this. Um, now your guides that can't be right in the middle or it won't, yeah, actually it will draw a guide. Sometimes it, uh, it won't draw a uh, guide if you're on a corner or in the middle. So you can always get a little bit offset. So I'm gonna just come out here six and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna draw a guide every six and a quarter inches. Yep, see there I'm in the middle, so I'll just be offset a little bit six and one quarter inches and I just use guides all the time because they make things so much easier and I'll just keep drawing my guides six and one quarter inches across six and one quarter so you'll see some plans out on the internet that tell you to uh, bolt the top of the table or screw the top of the table to uh, to these uh, these cross supports and y you can do that but that's not the best idea because this wood will tend to uh, buckle over time or expand and contract because of relative humidity and uh, and by attaching the table top using the tabletop uh, little Z clamps that you can find online uh, will allow the the wood to expand and contract without causing the whole table to buckle. So I'm going to zoom to my extents and now I'm going to grab the 2x2 two two, and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it um, and 
on each one of these, I can na now just move and place these 2 by 2s at each intersection. So once again, I'll copy and paste um, and match up the corners with the intersections and the guides. And that'll go pretty quick. I'm just hitting Control V to uh, to paste these uh, supports, and you really this is the way that the plan was originally put together. Honestly, you don't really need the, this many supports uh, for this table, but uh, because this is the way that you'll see the plan uh, out there online, um, I'm just going to do it this way. Sometimes. You can have a little bit of trouble um, getting these to uh, match up with the move tool as you move along in the three-dimensional space. So I'm going to, let's see, there we go. And got one more to put down. And that will bring this video to a conclusion. Let me zoom out, rotate that. So the base of the table has been completed. And the next step is to do the table top. Uh, before I do that, all of these guides get kind of annoying. And so I can just go up to edit, hit, excuse me, edit, hit delete guides. And that looks much, much better. So uh, we are a little more than halfway done. In the next video, I'm going to attach the table top and show you how to do that. And then uh, the last thing I like to do when I'm building my plans is create a cut list. Uh, which helps me when I go to the store to actually buy my lumber and then know how I want to cut my lumber. So that will be the fourth video that I show you. Hope you enjoyed this for uh, uh, this plan uh, that you can download and manipulate yourself as well as other cool projects. Head over to edhart.me and check that out. And thank you so much for watching.